thank you for all you've done and that you continue to do for the City Club. We are pleased to welcome guests at tables hosted by Baker Hostetler, Cuyahoga Community College, Defense Metals Technology Center, Key Bank, Medical Mutual, Notre Dame College, Richard L. Bowen and Associates, U.S. Army Recruiting, U.S. Navy, U.S. Naval Academy Alumni Association, West Point Society of Northeast Ohio, and Western Reserve Partners. Thank you for joining us today. We are also pleased to welcome to our forum students who are here as part of the City Club student program made possible by a gift from Morton G. and Natalie Epstein. Today we welcome students from East Tech High School. Will the students please stand to be recognized? Now we would like to return to our speaker for a traditional City Club question and answer period. We welcome questions from everyone, including guests. Holding the microphones today are City Club Development Director Cheryl Heldon and Program Director Carrie Miller. First question, please. Admiral, um, I want to thank you and the people in uniform for their services to this country. But my question for you is that are we making it their life more difficult by calling the uh, so-called jihadists, Islamists, and making them, legitimizing them in the eyes of the people who are illiterate, ignorant, by uh, Osama or uh, Al-Qaeda as, as a jihadist religious organization rather than saying they're not? And, and just for the record here, uh, I know that uh, you've been uh, counseled or instructed for to be brief as well. I want to assure you that before I came in today, I was counseled the same way. Um, so I'll try to do that. Um, I, the, you speak to, and I'll go back to what I said actually in my opening comments. Uh, I actually believe that um, so much of our future is tied to a, health, a healthy global economy period. And so I actually have spent a fair amount of my time on uh, understanding not just that, and this isn't new for me, the, the economic impact, uh, but also the uh, economic engines that are throughout the world, uh, now uh, and in the future, ours, China, India, Brazil, uh, Europe, the Middle East, etc. Uh, and I actually believe the long-term answer to your question is, is to be out of discussions like this, uh, because uh, it's so important, and it goes back to this sort of internet, this standard of parents, and they want to do this in a peaceful environment, and certainly we have a challenge uh, with that. And obviously the more stable and more peaceful it is, the less work I have, uh, although I think our engagement with militaries throughout the world is, is incredibly uh, important. And we find ourselves, uh, as everyone knows, in two wars right now, uh, and doing everything we can to focus on the people of Iraq specifically and on the people uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, and, uh, and you've seen uh, in the leadership, military leadership, certainly over the course of the, and civilian leadership over the course of the last year, an incredible focus on the people uh, of Afghanistan. We cannot succeed in Afghanistan if we keep killing civilians. We can't convince them we're there to help them if we're killing their families. And we've taken, we've made significant strides there. It still does occur, sadly and tragically, uh, and every single loss is, is exactly that, is a tragedy, and certainly I understand that. Uh, and then that gets into the near-term challenge that we have, which certainly uh, there are those that agree with it and those that don't agree with it, uh, and I don't have an answer uh, in terms of what we name and how people react. Uh, I would say as soon as I, if I took a different tact, uh, there would be another group that would be equally upset. I think it's important in the long run, how does all this end from my perspective? Uh, it ends when 15-year-old, mostly boys, although not exclusively, you know, when 15-year-old boys or girls uh, reach a point where they're going to make a decision in their life and they decide that it would be one of education and opportunity and employment and making a difference as opposed to one strapping on a suicide vest and seeing how many in its civilian 
innocent civilian men and women they can kill. Uh, and uh, and the, the, that challenge is a long-term challenge that has to do with economies and governments and opportunities. Uh, in the near term, there's a threat, a se very serious threat, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the border area between Afghanistan and Pakistan, and it, it isn't, and it is a growing, uh, th there's a growing synergy between terrorist organizations in that part of the world, uh, whether it's uh, Al-Qaeda or LET, or the Afghan Taliban or the Pakistan Taliban and other organizations. They threaten Americans, they thre threaten Westerns, they still have a goal to kill as many of us as they could. And a friend of mine said uh, that the, the three, certainly the tragedy of 911 and the over the 3,000 people that we lost and the tens and hundreds of thousands that that affected. If they could have killed 3,000, if they ki could have killed 30,000, they would have. If they could have killed 300,000, they would have. That that goal is still out there, and there are other organizations who are now reaching transnationally out of the region to do the same kind of thing. Admiral Mullen, over here to your right. Okay. Uh, not long ago, the president announced a date certain by which we were to be out of Afghanistan. And as I recall, within a week, General Petraeus on Meet the Press said it would depend on conditions on the ground. Can you reconcile those for me, please? Actually, the president reconciled those when he announced the date. Uh, what has happened is, it, it is July 2011, uh, it was uh, the, the date for the beginning of withdrawal uh, and thinning of our forces, and that that decision, how many there would be, where they would come from, would be conditions-based, based on the conditions on the ground. Uh, and General Petraeus, myself, and others have re-emphasized that. And the date's done a couple of things, uh, one of which was very important, which is it has uh, galvanized uh, the Afghans, the Af those who are the Afghan security forces and the Afghan leadership, in ways that they had not been galvanized before, uh, that, that they need to move as fast as they possibly can to take over. And we see them doing that when they're ready to take over. President Karzai in, uh, in the Kabul conference last month said he put out a goal out there of 2014 for them to be able to take over their security. And I think as a backdrop of this, we shouldn't forget where we were in Iraq a few years ago with the criticism of the Iraqi security forces, the view of many that we couldn't, they could not be built, that they could not take over uh, for their own security, and yet they do that today, and they do that very effectively. The Afghan, uh, uh, the Afghan campaign has not been resourced until recently uh, at a level where we could look to a direction that would succeed. We now have the right resources, troops. We've got 47 countries who have military troops in Afghanistan. This isn't the United States alone. That says a lot about the importance uh, of the campaign. We've got the right leadership, the right strategy, uh, and we need, to, my, from my view, we need to give this some time uh, to uh, see where we are. And I think by next summer, by July 2011, we'll know a whole lot more about where we are and, and what we should do uh, from that point on. 